G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Really quick video today where I'm just going to share some techniques you can use in order to create note blocks or standard notes on your drawings. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you how to do it in a relatively BIM centric manner. Uh, one method will be a little bit worse than the other one, but for some reason is still very common in the industry. Um, but the other one is much more BIM centric, so I quite like it. Anyway, um, let's just jump straight in. So I'm just on a uh, very typical residential housing project here. Um, and often on sheets like maybe a general arrangement plan, we might want to include a note block somewhere with standard inclusions or notes to the builder. Um, if you want to put this into just a single little schedule, there are two ways to do this. Now the first one I'm going to show you is more like a hack that's still used by a lot of people, and that is to create a key schedule on something that's not being used in the model and creating heaps of unused keys essentially. So I'm going to go to view schedules and I'm going to create in this case schedules and quantities and at this point you're going to want to pick a category that you pretty much never use in the model so if you're an architect you're probably going to pick something related to a services trade um, usually I recommend just picking one that even a services trade person would pretty rarely use or maybe something like path of travel lines just something that's just super unused in the model essentially I haven't tried using path of travel lines before so that might be a little bit difficult because there are quite a lot of factors that relate to path of travel um, in, in a, from a system aspect. So you may be better off looking for something a little bit more abstract maybe. Um, but no, maybe zone equipment. I've never used zone equipment before. So in this case, I'm just going to call this um, general notes. And we're going to switch it over to a key schedule. And for the key name, we're just going to call this note. So these are going to be the notes that we populate. At the moment, um, we just have our key name. Now, it looks like there's actually heaps of stuff related to zone equipment, so maybe I picked a category that's not ideal. But for me as an architect, I pretty much never use it. So I'm going to OK this. And at this point, we can just start inserting rows in our schedule. I can also go and add um, other fields. I can either add one of the system-based fields, or I can create a project parameter that applies to these. So for example, maybe I'll just say in this case, this is description maybe and you can have more than one column in your node schedule so in this case um, we'll just say that various or probably vary by group instance makes sense it probably doesn't really matter all that matters is it's a text parameter maybe the key name in this case we might actually make this um, the note itself is actually just a number of the note so it's note one note two note three etc I might also just um, center align my notes and then just expand my note block from here, I can do things such as uh, you know, refer to structural engineers' drawings. You know, we love deferring to other people's drawings as architects, so let's do that. You know, refer to FF&E schedule. Uh, you know, this is not my problem. <laughs> Just making some silly notes. Talk, talk to my lawyer about this one. And let's just say we only want those particular notes. So I actually just deleted the column there. I don't want to do that. But what I can do is just delete my keys until I've just got the number that I need to show. Um, now, in this case, these notes are going to be um, just project wide. So in this case, we're not really filtering them down by any particular aspect. Um, they just are what they are. I'm also just going to align these to the left. And maybe um, I might just switch my headers to be a different, a different font. So I might make my title text. Uh, on my header text, I might just make that bold and I'm just going to turn off my, my title. And now we have a general note block. So technically, if you made like a zone, a zone element um, in this case, it would actually have these parameters available as keys. Um, but otherwise, it really just looks like a standard block of notes, essentially. Um, now, there's not really any connection between uh, notes on the drawing and, and actual uh, annotations. So if you put down an annotation that said one, it doesn't actually have any direct connection to this general note. So I don't really like this approach because it doesn't really have a BIM focused approach to it. It's not very intelligent. Um, what I much prefer is actually to store this element in something like a generic annotation. So in this case, I'm instead going to make a new family and I'm going to make a generic annotation in this case, which I think is under annotations. And then there should be a metric generic annotation. And in this case, I'm going to include a label parameter. So I'm going to go to create label and I'll just pick a three millimeter label for now. And I'm going to make a new parameter and I'm going to call this, um, I'll call this a uh, number. I'm going to make it text based 
and I'm just going to add this. And I'm going to say that number by default is XX. And it's preview. And I might just make so it doesn't wrap between parameters. And possibly maybe we can put a uh, put a border around it. Because essentially this is just going to be like a marker um, on the drawings per se. Now I can start creating notes essentially. So I'm going to say this is um, note 1. Um, and I'm going to add another parameter. And I'm just going to call this uh, description. And let's just say that in this case, uh, you know, note one is going to be refer to structural engineer's drawings. Now, I think you might even be able to pick multi-line text in this case. Um, I'm just going to double check. Yeah, so I think multi-line text might actually be better. Um, so what I'm going to do is just call this uh, description two, and I'll just delete the other one. But I'm pretty sure we can schedule multi-line text as well which gives you a little bit more formatting control over the layout of the node itself, so you can add additional lines. Um, so let's just try that instead. Great. Now I'm just going to add maybe like three notes in this case, and you could put the note in the name of the type um, if you want to really obviously know what type of note you're pl placing down in your drawings. Um, in this case, we'll just say refer to FFP schedule and testing an additional line. There's obviously some formatting you can't do, like italicization or bold, uh, but in this case you can at least put just basic text, which is usually what a note block's made of anyway. Finally, we'll just say note 3, and we'll just say in this case, let's hope this works. Great. So now we've created three types in here. Um, I'm just going to save this family and load it down into my project so we can use it in our model. Now in this case, um, if I go to a view, such as a sheet, I can go and place these as symbols. So I can place a uh, note one, I can place note two, and I can place note three. And the great thing about this approach is the notes are inherently connected to the data contained inside the tag that you're picking as a type. So the next step you need to do from here is actually create a schedule. Now I just realized I placed these on the sheet. We don't really want to do that. We'd probably rather place them in the view. So I'll just place them in the view. And the great thing is if you use these in other places, they're still in inherently connected to each other. So the node is in principle the same node. What we do now is go to view, schedules, and we're gonna use a note block. And I'm going to pick, in this case, my testing note. And I'll just call this um, general notes. And now we can add the number and the description. We can filter by particular notes if we want to. So if you only want to show like a small handful of notes based on whether they meet a certain criteria. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to filter by number. or will sort by number and de-itemize. And now we essentially have a note block, but in this case, it is dynamically connected to the actual notes themselves that are going to be placed on the drawing. So there's actually a strong connection in this case between them. So I can just go format my format my schedule in the same way. There we go. And now if I place this particular general notes schedule, it's going to be far more intelligent in where it's actually harvesting its data from. And as you can see, it also supports multi-line text, which is great. Um, but now if I actually go and I modify the properties of note 2, maybe I just want to say that um, the FFP schedule is located at... And I can type in a path. Check it out. My note block updates to suit that annotation object. So it's far more intelligent. In my opinion, it's the best way to handle uh, general notes in a project. Um, and the fact that you can filter them based on various criteria means that you could also add other parameters to them, um, such as discipline. So if you want to just put all your electrical, fire, hydraulic notes all in one, one uh, family, um, you can do it that way as well. And you can obviously change this so it's the text of the note instead, um, instead of just the number. One challenge you will have with this is the orientation of the text is going to be fixed. So if you want your text to be laid out and sized to a very particular size, you'll need to include multiple blocks of text in the one family connected to a label um, with different formatting options and visibility parameters connected to them. 
So for example, in this case, I can say this is going to be uh, a number. I'm going to make it instance based. So I'm going to make it an instance based visibility control. And then I'll just make a new text size. I'll just make this 1.5 millimeters. And in this case, we are going to want to wrap our text. So we're going to go left instead of center and we'll go top for justification. So we're going to be in a top right justification. I'm also not going to wrap between parameters only. So when this reaches a new line, it's going to jump down to the next line. I'll go edit label and I'll just add my description instead of my number. Finally, I'll add a visibility parameter and I'll just say in this case, description. I'll make this a visibility parameter and I'll just roughly line that up to the middle of my family. And we'll just say when description is on, number is off. I'll just make that just a little bit wider. Now, if I reload my note block family, we can switch between a description or a number. And we should also be able to add leaders. Um, in this case, we can go add leader and you'll roughly get a leader lined up to where you want it to be. It's usually lined up to the, the origin point of the family, if I understand correctly. Actually, it's not, it's, it looks like it's lined up somewhere different. Um, it looks like it's probably lined up to the edge of the circle. Yeah, so it's not ideal. Um, but you can also just get it to say what the node is meant to say as well, I guess is the point that I'm that I'm trying to convey here. So um, hopefully these are some useful techniques um, and they show you a, a more smart way to potentially handle your general notes in a BIM environment. Uh, so there we go. Hopefully that is a useful set of techniques you can apply on your projects. Hint, hint, architecture firms, get your typical notes in line. <laughs> Not many of them do. Um, but anyway, uh, I've had it requested many times, so I hope that this helps people out there that actually requested uh, this particular topic. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos like this one. Thanks, take care, bye.